Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, we're wrapping up 2024 by going over the current GPU market from top to bottom to give you guys our picks at each price point. There are a lot of GPUs to go over, but before we get into it, today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Hetzner, a leading host provider and data center operator in Europe. By combining new technology, affordable pricing, and competent in-house support, Hetzner is a reliable and strong partner for professional infrastructure and has been since 1997. Along with their locations across the US and most recently Singapore, they also operate their own state-of-the-art centers in Germany and Finland. Hetzner servers are powerful, affordable, GDPR compliant, and are becoming more accessible for personal and business use. Alongside their Euro payment option, they're offering dollar payments for new accounts. So to learn more about what Hetzner has to offer, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so let's start with the most affordable options and then work our way up to the most expensive. And please note, with the exception of the most affordable GPUs, right now, not a good time to buy a GPU because early next year during the CES trade show, both AMD and Nvidia are set to announce next generation GPUs. So not too far away now, and that probably will mean that the GPUs you're buying now aren't going to hold their value very well, and there could be some fire sales going on in the not too distant future. Anyway, let's wrap up 2024's GPU market. Starting with the most affordable discrete GPU options, this pick is both easy and a little bit complicated, but we'll get to that in a moment. It's easy because by far the best value option here would be Intel's new Arc B580 for the $250 US MSRP. It's faster than both the RTX 4060 and RX 7600. It costs less and it packs more VRAM at 12 gigabytes. So for me, that one is an easy pick. However, complicating things is the unexpected extreme demand for the Arc B580. And as a result, you can't actually buy it anywhere. All initial stock sold out prior to release on pre-order, and this led some to believe that the B580 is merely a paper launch. And while that could very well be true, it's a little too early in my opinion to make that call. Historically, we've seen whenever there's a popular mainstream GPU release, or really any popular GPU release for that matter, it's been nearly impossible to buy one at launch, and availability issues often last weeks, if not longer. So it's not surprising that the B580 is out of stock everywhere right now. The question, of course, being, when will you be able to buy one? And right now, unfortunately, I can't answer that. So as it stands, if you can get a B580 for around $250 US, I suggest you do so. It's a great deal, and I don't think there'll be anything better for the foreseeable. But if you can't get the B580, and you're not interested in waiting for next generation GPUs, your sub $300 US options are as follows. The GeForce RTX 3050 for $180 US, but it's the six gigabyte model, and the RTX 3050 sucks anyway. It's a very slow GPU and really you'd want the eight gigabyte model if anything, but that costs even more at $200. There's also the Radeon RX 6600, which has been the go-to budget option for quite a long time now, but it is becoming rather slow. And at $190 US, it's no longer that attractive. And the same also applies to the 6600 XT, which costs at least $240 US. Instead, the Arc A750 is a better value option right now at $190, offering better performance at the same price, so that's a viable option. Now, the Radeon RX 7600 has dropped down to just $250 US to combat the Arc B580, and while that certainly makes it a more attractive option when compared to the $300 RTX 4060, if you can buy the B580 for $250, I'd still recommend the Intel GPU. So in short, if you can get the B580 for $250 US, do so, it wins this category. But if unavailable, the Arc A750 is a great entry level choice. Or if you have a little bit more money to spend, the Radeon RX 7600 is also a solid choice at its current discounted price. Stepping up to the four to $500 price range, there aren't that many options right now, and parts like the 16 gigabyte RTX 4060 Ti don't appear to be in stock anymore, or at least there are very few options, and the ones that do exist are heavily overpriced. 
generally selling above the original $500 US MSRP, which was never really a good price. Well, it was never a good price for that part. They are meant to start at $450 US these days, but even there, they do get destroyed in terms of value by the much cheaper Radeon RX 7700 XT, which can be had for $400 US and offers a little over 10% better performance. So without question, the best value choice here is the 7700 XT, and right now there are multiple models selling for $400 US. In terms of cost per frame, it's comparable with the much cheaper RX 7600, but unlike the 7600, the 7700 XT offers 12 gigabytes of VRAM. And it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway, the 8 gigabyte version of the RTX 4060 Ti should not be entertained at all for $410 US. In fact, it should be avoided like the plague because that 8 gigabyte VRAM buffer means that at most, this is a $300 US product. So the 4060 Ti 8GB remains the worst GeForce 40 series GPU in my opinion. Then for those of you happy to spend up around $500 US, there's the Radeon RX 7800 XT for $470 US, or the GeForce RTX 4070 starting at $520 US, which is technically out of our price range here, but we're also not recommending it anyway, so I guess it doesn't really matter. In terms of value, the 7800 XT is much better than the RTX 4070, coming in 14% cheaper per frame in our most up-to-date testing. The 7800 XT also packs a 16GB frame buffer, which we believe is the minimum amount of VRAM expected at this price point. The only caveat being, if you're very interested in ray tracing performance, then the RTX 4070 would be worth paying a premium for. But outside of that, the 7800 XT does everything else as well, nearly as well, or better. So in summary, for those of you looking at spending between $400 and $500 US, the best options are Radeon GPUs, either the 7700 XT or the 7800 XT. And in terms of value, they're much the same. The 7800 XT might be worth spending that little bit extra on for the additional VRAM, though 12 gigabytes should be sufficient for the most part. There are even fewer options for those of you looking at spending between $5 to $700 US, though again you could include the RTX 4070 in this category, given it costs at least $520 US, so based on that probably should have included it, but if I did I'd pass on it again anyway because the 1700 GRE is a better deal at $570 US. So the options here include the Radeon RX 7900 GRE for $570, the GeForce RTX 4070 Super for $620, and the Radeon RX 7900 XT for $680. Now, despite being priced above its $600 US MSRP, the 4070 Super still stacks up quite well. For rasterization, it's generally around 10% slower than the 7900 XT, but current pricing sees it almost 10% cheaper. So in terms of cost per frame, they end up being much the same, and this also applies to the cheaper GRE model. But when it comes to ray tracing performance, the RTX 4070 Super is faster, often a lot faster, so if you're interested in ray tracing, that's worth keeping in mind. Meanwhile, the only advantage of the 7900 series is the larger memory buffer. The 7900 GRE is armed with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which I believe should be the minimum amount at this price point, while the 7900 XT gets 20 gigabytes. Still, for the most part, at least as things stand right now, the RTX 4070 Super will mostly get away with its 12GB VRAM buffer. DLSS frame generation and upscaling is also still superior to FSR, though the gap has closed, especially with FSR 3.1, but not enough games support this version yet. Moreover, we still believe, based on our extensive testing, that DLSS is noticeably better, especially at lower resolutions, such as 1440p for example. In short, we believe paying a premium for DLSS upscaling and DLAA is worth it. Though we don't feel DLSS frame generation is an essential feature, but you get it anyway when buying a GeForce 40 series GPU. So all of that said and done, I can't really pick a clear winner here. All three are viable options, and I don't think you can go too wrong. Ultimately, it's gonna come down to the pricing in your region, but if it looks like what we're seeing over at Newegg, at the time of making this video, then there's really no wrong option. I'm really split between the 7900 XT and 4070 Super. If you, like me, don't care that much for ray tracing, 
as in what you've seen so far hasn't really impressed you, then I think the 7900 XT is the way to go. The 4070 Super certainly isn't going to get better at ray tracing as it ages. In fact, the opposite is true, and we've seen this time and time again with past RTX generations. But if you do want to check out RT, or you like what you've seen in games such as Alan Wake 2, Black Myth Wukong, and Cyberpunk for example, then the 4070 Super will be the way to go. Earlier I mentioned how right now is not a good time to buy a GPU. Well, the higher you go in terms of performance, the truer that statement gets. Going beyond $700 US, we find the next stop is $800 US for a GeForce RTX 4070 Ti Super, or $870 for a Radeon RX 7900 XTX. You could really make a valid argument for purchasing either model, but as I said, I don't recommend buying either right now, given what's expected early next year. It's just a month away now. But if for some reason you had to buy one of these products right now, it's a similar situation to the $500 to $700 price range, with maybe a few very minor differences. For example, the TI Super has 16GB of VRAM, which is currently sufficient, and should be for at least the next few years, or even the realistic lifespan of this product. So VRAM here is a non-issue, but also the DLSS versus FSR battle is less important if you plan on gaming at resolutions above 1440p. For example, at 4K, there is very little difference in visual quality between these upscaling methods, so it is far less of an issue. Still, what is an issue, at least for the Radeon GPUs, is ray tracing. It's possibly more of an issue here, as you're more likely to want to use RT effects on an $800 plus GPU. And if that is the case, the 4070 Ti Super will be the way to go. But if you don't care that much for RT, then the 7900 XTX is the faster product for rasterization and just a better value choice. Outside of these two options, everything else appears to have been discontinued. For example, it's difficult to find RTX 4080s in stock, and at best they're retailing for $1,200 US, but they're more like $1,600 plus. And it's a similar story for the 4080 Super. $1,500 US is the starting point, but most are priced over $1,600. So please don't buy either of those products at those prices. That's absurd. Oh, and there's also the RTX 4090, which has also been donezo for a, a little while now. And in fact, even this time last year was often priced above the $1,600 US MSRP. So given that, I would brace yourself for the RTX 5090. It is going to be brutal. And that's going to do it for our final best of GPUs video of 2024. Sadly, the GPU market goes out with a bit of a whimper and is in desperate need of a reboot, which fortunately, as I've said, will happen next month. So fingers crossed that goes well. The only exciting thing to happen in the GPU market for the second half of this year was the release of Intel's Arc B580, but it's still unclear just how exciting that release is. Hopefully we'll see some decent supply soon. Otherwise the B580 could end up being another disappointment. Anyway, all we can do right now is wait and that's really the best course of action anyway. We'll wait and see what happens at CES and of course the reviews that follow. And that is going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, you know what to do, subscribe, all that stuff. We also have the join button or Patreon if you want to become a member, get access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams, behind the scenes content, Q&A stuff, a lot of cool things there. So check that out if you're interested, but if not, that's perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.